I'll take this whole damn wreck. Hold on, my man. Hold on, my man. I'll take this whole wreck. What? This ain't you, man. Calm down, man. Let's go. Don't land on my way. Karen meets with the superhero Blade, but this time, he's a villain. A lady duels over an invisible phone with another customer. A customer starts World War III when she isn't allowed to pay with a complimentary card. A lady creates a scene so at odds with her appearance, leaving less shocked. A buyer claims to be the last good man, but his behavior proves otherwise. A customer was robbed at home, but comes to the shop to report it and get compensation. Not all thieves wear hoods and cows. Let's talk about times people have tried to rob the store in broad daylight. Karen meets with the superhero Blade, but this time he's a villain. Unfortunately for him, Les has given his staff a crash course on how to deal with funny customers. Good morning. We need to talk to somebody. Is his body made of blades? How can a coat shred from taking a ride? This customer story has holes big enough to fit a person. Just bought this coat here about a week ago, riding down the road and the thing just shreds up. Uh, I want my money back. Or How is that receipt enough? Anyone could pick up an old coat from the storage and try to make some free cash. It's a little beat up to me. Yeah, you're telling me. I'm not very happy. Do you have your receipt? No, isn't this receipt enough? No, it's not. I need a receipt. The policy is clear, but the customer doesn't seem to understand. We've got to hand it to Karen. She handles the situation well despite him being annoying. If the customer had met any of the golds, he would be out of the store by now. I want my money back or I want another coat. Can't help you unless you have a receipt. All I want is another coat or I want my damn money. Can't help you unless- How about a trip to the police van? Now we know what the customer is about. He's just a con man looking to score a coat out of a naive attendant. But tough for him, he got Karen. How about I just take one? Uh, well, I don't really recommend you taking one. What you gonna do? Attempting to destroy things is the fastest way out of the store, and the biker is escorted out with the nice Karen getting his coat for him. By the way, does that coat look shredded to you? I'll take this whole damn wreck. Hold on, my man. Hold on, I'll take my man, this my whole man. wreck. What? This ain't, this ain't you, man. Calm down, man. Let's go. The lady duels over an invisible phone with another customer. Karen knows from experience that customers acting friendly is never a guarantee the encounter will go smoothly, and this lady proves her right again. Anything catches your eye that you want me to pull out? I was kind of looking at some of these watches. Did you see her bring out a phone? Does she think throwing a tantrum would make the store give her one? The only thing I would give her is Byron's services. Where the hell is my phone? Something wrong? Yeah, my phone. I just let my phone. Did you take my phone? Take your phone. Accusing other innocent customers is wrong of the lady, and her accusations become tiresome for Karen. Get the manager. You hold on. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There was no phone. There was no phone. There was no phone. The other lady would have an exciting story to tell her folks. Imagine shopping quietly, and someone comes at you for something you've got no knowledge of. Yo, my shit. Yo, y'all better get this lady, because I ain't got nothing. Yo, please. Listen. Listen. Crazy. Crazy. I'm out of here, yo. Karen's comment sets the woman off. She's pissed enough that her harebrained idea to get a free phone didn't work, but Karen rubbing the failure in proves a little too much. Hey. Yo, gangster years is over with, baby. Calm down. You ain't gonna need that cane. Go ahead, put hey, the cane down. Chill out. Thanks, gangster, Byron. calm down. What you call You ain't out? that bad. I am. I'm bad at the- A customer starts World War III when she isn't allowed to pay with a complimentary card. There are many alternatives to cash payment now, but this customer isn't yet recognized. That doesn't stop her from trying, though. Hi, excuse me. Yeah. Hi, I'm looking for a watch. Buy me about $100. I got a $100 isn't a bad deal for a pretty watch. The lady is so satisfied with this deal that she doesn't even complain about the extra, you know, $6 deductible. It's really pretty. It's really Looks pretty. good on you. It was 100 100 I'll take it. Okay. Now we add tax on that. Be 106 all right. Well, there's good and bad news. The bad news is that the card can't be used for transactions, while the good news is that she can get a discount for products from the issuing store. She should go there. Maybe they sell watches too. All right, gift card? $100 gift card. These are not our gift cards. What would you call it? Is these are preferred customer. Right. So these are VIP cards. Is she kidding? How can you lose something you never had in the first place? With how upset the lady is, only Byron can explain the situation to her outside the store. So you telling me I'm losing $100? 
What is she gonna say? Y'all don't understand up in here. Okay, I'm not about to lose. Hold on one second. Let me explain. I'm not about to lose. Whoa, that got personal really fast. Why do people descend to name calling when they don't get their way? The customer must have been a schoolyard bully as a kid. You the ugliest two sisters I've ever seen in my life. Are you my sister? Hey, sister, what up? Somebody wanna buy our preferred gift card? Lady creates a scene so at odds with her appearance, leaving less shocked. When did I want my money back become the response to a greeting? That's all the clue Les needs to know. This is going to be a tricky confrontation. I want my money back. I paid you $500 for this purse. I want my money back. One of the store's policies is never to buy or sell fake items, so there's clearly a mix-up here. Either the lady bought the purse somewhere else and is trying to blame the store, or a staff member scammed her. Let me gain my composure before anybody- Don't gain your composure. Before somebody goes Give and- Give me slam, my money back. You sold me a fake purse. the purse. You sold me a- Not having a receipt cancels out the possibility of scamming staff. From experience, Les knows the customers are up to no good if there's no proof of purchase. Hey, Do you have the receipt? I didn't give you a second when I gave you my money. Ma'am, I'm trying not to really You lose took my control. money and I won't. Show I'm me the receipt. Die. I don't have a receipt. This grandma is as sassy as they come with a little dose of rudeness. Doesn't she realize Les isn't obligated to help her out? I please have my money. No, that's how to start it. You know what that stands for? What You're is MK? I want my money. There will be, ma'am. If she's taking the matter to court, she better be prepared to be sued for being a nuisance, too, because Les won't play nice after her gimmicks today. Put Get your hands Put off me. Out. I'm not. Put your cigarette out. Put, put it out. Get your hands off me. Put your cigarette Get out. Get your hands off me and I'll put it out. Give me my money. That's all I want is my money. Give me a card, because I'm going to sue your ass. Okay, I'll see you. Now, we can add willful destruction to property to the list of claims against the lady. Throw in intent to defraud, and Les has a pretty robust case against her. I'm gonna bust. I'm gonna hit you. You're not gonna bust nothing. I Dang, hit you. Well, I go got ahead. a son. I've been hit by much harder. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, get him. Yeah, right. All right. Stupid ass mother. The client claims to be the last good man, but his behavior proves otherwise. For Seth, customers who know what they want are the best, and this customer fits into that category. I'm looking for cameras. What kind of good cameras you yeah, got? Yeah, whatever you need. Yeah, so some point oh, and shoot okay, right over here. here. Let me look at this black one right here. Seth's polite question should win of a diplomatic post. Way to go, dude, calling him a thief without saying the words. You just want me to ring you up? You want me to put it in a bag for you? Um, I'll just keep it right here. I'm just going to keep looking around. With the man's confession about having a short-term recollection, Seth is more bothered about letting him hold on to the camera without paying. Forgetting to pay for it would be very convenient for him. We're going to be shopping around. That's fine. Let's pay for it now, and then you can keep it in your pocket, and then you can keep shopping. Why can't I just pay for everything at the end of shopping? Then I'll hold the camera until you're ready. Seth isn't trying to call him anything, but you know what they say if the label sticks. He'll hold on to your camera until you're ready to buy something. But it makes no sense. I'm going to buy the You know camera. what? The, the best part of being the owner of this place, it doesn't have to make sense to everybody as long as it makes sense to me. Maybe he should open up his own store. No respectable store owner would let you put their product in your pocket without payment. There you go. I'll solve that. Thank you, sir. But I want to buy the camera. Sure, $90, sir. Your store is a bunch of you can leave, sir. Since most people in Detroit don't care for his opinion, Seth wouldn't lose anything from throwing the man out. Brother, no, I, no, if you won't let me buy it. Have a nice day, sir. I'm still shopping. Store sucks. The customer mistakes the store for a charity office and throws a tantrum when denied. It's weird how some people think they can simply demand stuff and it's just going to be given to them. I need to get my stuff, my two TVs. I need your ID or the ticket. Uh, my what? ID or your ticket. Why is she here then? Does the sign outside say police station? If your items are missing, you should go to the police to complain, not the pawn store. I have no ticket or no ID. My stuff was stolen in pawns from my boyfriend. Except her name is Walton or Mars. It isn't going to get her a television. I need your ID or the I ticket. I can give you my name. I need my stuff, like, now. Well, you have to make a police report. I need my stuff, a police report. Why does she think her missing items are in the store? This isn't the only pawn shop in the state, even though it is pretty popular. Ma'am, is there an issue? Two TVs were stolen, a ring, and I just drove up here from Flint. I need my I'm at the police. Look, I just want my
All the ladies screaming isn't impressive to Ashley, and she handles the drama personally. If it's a screaming match the customer wants, oh, she'll get one since Ashley is in the mood to humor her. Don't be in it. my way! Get my f***ing bitch! What, if I'm gonna have to get ratchet? You don't pound in my window! I'm gonna with the f she should be thankful that Joe restrained her, or she would have been headed to the police station she's been avoiding so much. And this time, not as the victim. I'm not leaving out of here. My, I get my f***ing out. Now. I'm not leaving out of here until I get my Right there. Right there. Have a good day. Some people are touchy with personal matters. When Les asks an innocent but somewhat personal question, this customer flips. I'm here to pawn these earrings. Okay. Trying to get $350 for them. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. Les is just trying to piss her off with his questions now, and the lady makes it easy. I'm coming in here with my jewelry to get money. How many kids she got? She just told you. No, she didn't tell me. So with all that attitude, her jewelry is a copy? The store has a policy against fakes, but even if it doesn't, Les wouldn't want to help after all the insults. These are real. They are real earrings. They're just not real diamonds. They are. No, they're yes, not. The f they are real. Okay, why are they picking on Les's clothing choice? Okay, then again, it is kind of a valid question. Who wears leather in such hot weather? I mean, it's that fake leather coat you right. got on. It's a thousand degrees. Who the f wears right. leather? Where's Les's ears would ring for the rest of the day because those ladies weren't stopping talking anytime soon. But at least the store is quiet again. Don't wrinkled up, probably ain't had no years. Supposed to be jewelry and long, bullshit ass shot, waggedy mother. The customer was robbed at home, but comes to the shop to report it and get compensation. The conversation starts well enough, even with introductions. Most customers get pleasantries and go straight to yelling. And my nephew had pawned his TV in. Uh -huh. And when he came back to get it, it was already being sold. It right. was on the shelf. Why did the nephew leave the store with a TV that had no remote? And there's no receipt? You can tell something's wrong when there's no proof of purchase. That's the barcode for the TV. Oh, you took the barcode off the TV. If we could just get, get a remote. remote for the TV, right. you know, that'd be all good. You know? If it didn't come with the remote, I don't know if I had the remote. Lion must have thought that he was scamming the shop when he got the TV at a cheap rate. Well, the joke's on him. It was that affordable because there was no remote. When I rebought my TV, yeah. they didn't have a remote control. And right. I know I pawned the TV in with right. the remote control. Right. So right. why I don't have it now? You know what well, I'm saying? Well, you bought it without the remote control. Why won't she give it a rest? Even her nephew knows that he brought this on himself, and no amount of yelling would make Les give up a remote. Where's the remotes? You got one back there somewhere. I got lots of them. It's you back get there them the somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No. Back there. Go, okay, yeah, so go back right. there. Remote thief is the best that she can come up with? Lion knows not to bring his aunt next time that he wants to make a complaint. What kind of business are you running here? A pretty good one. Your remote stealer! I mean, have a nice day. Your remote stealer! She pawned two of our laptops, and she told us she was going to give us the money and the laptops back. Because she knew some, she knew somebody that worked here. He would bring them out to the back. I can go 100. You're just pawning. I need more than that. I have to pawn this TV so people can help me move my stuff back in my mother's house. 100 is not going to do, sir. I need more than that. But I can't give you more. Customers try to cash in a counterfeit pawn ticket. Two customers bring in a lawyer to help give legal aid on an issue they had with Leslie over their pawn ticket. My client brought in a $10,000 ring here, and she wants to either collect the remaining money owed to her on the ring or get the ring back. Okay, let me, She's got a receipt let me explain right here. To you. Leslie brings over a real ticket from the shop in hopes of showing the stark difference the two share. This is what our receipts actually look like. Number one, our tickets do not have this many numbers. Because of the amount of numbers that we have, this is the amount of numbers that are here. Confronted with the truth, the customer stays stuck to their beliefs. Period. End of story. Somebody printed that up. That is some bull It may be bull but that's the truth. I don't know how I got mixed up or printing wrong or whatever, but this is the ticket he got from here. He didn't get it from here. After comparing the exhibits, the lawyer delivers his verdict on the ticket. This is a fake. Now you say with them, you're not I representing us. I'm representing if you, I don't get my you, ring or my money for them, how you gonna get paid? You brought in a fraudulent ticket. I didn't bring no fraudulent ticket. This you, ticket came. You from just as fake as the mother gave us the ticket. How about that? No, I I don't believe that the store gave you this ticket. Nah, well I don't believe you a real attorney. Yeah, we ain't got it right. This boy.
Somebody you, better you give me my money. With these what money? When the customers try to raise a heckle, Leslie decides to kick them out of the shop. <laughs> you, <laughs> him, <laughs> security. Uh, have me. a nice day. Nah, you Thank got you. me, bitch. What Sorry, young man. Sorry, young man. Sorry, and you, we are you ain't getting shit. American Jew is bull shit. And you bull shit too. I don't know what kind of mother turn you in, but you gonna collect my shit. I'm gonna collect it out your ass. Customers try to steal purse. A female customer makes her way over to meet Ashley with hopes of making payment for a purse she had allegedly pawned. She's telling me this is expired. That's my purse right there. That one right there is black one. So I wanna know why it's out there. This is your purse. That's my purse right there. How do you money. know that's your purse? Because I know my purse. Here's the money. I want the purse. However, the purse in question was never a pawn item in the first place. That's not your purse. How do you know it's not my purse? Because that purse has been out there. Let me see it. Let me look at it. Can I look at it? If you want to buy it. I just want to look at it and make sure it's not mine. Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm not, not First of all, don't talk to me like I'm a at idiot. You. Give me my purse or I'm going to come over that counter and get it myself. What's it going to be? When she tried to get her hands on the purse by climbing over the counter, Byron makes an appearance to see her out. Okay. Oh my god. Get, get your hands off me. Have a nice day. Let's go. Or Walk yourself out, young. You. Walk get your hands off Walk me. Walk yourself out. You know you just hit me with that pole, right? Go. Two scammers get scammed of their belongings. Leslie gets a visit from two greedy customers who had been trying to take advantage of the shop but got burned in the process. Who is it? Tell me. She pawned two of our laptops, and she told us she was gonna give us the money and the laptops back because she knew some, she knew somebody that worked. He bring them out to the back. The two young men had handed their laptops over to a woman who offered them a chance to get their laptops and the money from taking a pawn loan. However, things didn't go as planned. She you pawned something. Yes. She had the ticket to When did you pawn it? Today. 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 Okay. She, had, she had the ticket to our stuff. This girl told you one of my guys would meet you at the back door, so you'd end up with the laptops and the money? Yes. They tried to convince Leslie into switching the tickets so they can come for the laptops later. So the laptops are not in your name? No. No. I can't put a hold on it for you. I know. That's why I, I wanted to know. If I can't no. do it because according to law, they belong to her, not you. Oh my god, Sil. After listening to their story, Leslie decides to leave them a way out of the mess they found themselves in. But if you can find out which one of my employees, you give me the guy's name, I'll give you the computers. Find me out what I need to know, I can make magic happen. Yeah, no problem. Let me look into this, come back later, then we'll talk. I'm sorry. Hi, man. Customer tries to sell his item for twice the market value. Leslie gets a visit from a customer who's hoping to trade his TV for some cash. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, sir? That's good. Um, I'm going to pawn this TV. Okay. I'm looking for 400. What can you do? I can go 100. Excuse me? The customer is slightly agitated when his excessive demand is not met. I can go 100. You're just pawning. I need more than that. I have to pawn this TV so people can help me move my stuff back in my mother's house. 100 is not going to do, sir. I need more than that. But I can't give you more. See, it's a used TV. My ex-boyfriend hit for me. You know, I have to get away. You see this? He did this last night. I have to get the away from him. Yeah, what did he yeah, do to you last I, night? He beat me up last night. You clearly don't see that. I don't. After telling Leslie a sob story, which the old man doesn't buy, the customer resorts to anger. I need to pawn this TV so I can get the <laughs> I'm trying to be nice before I lose my temper. It's like, can you just give me the money? See, you know what? <laughs> you want to cause me to lose my mother temper. When the customer remains unreasonable, Leslie signals for security in case of trouble. Turn around. I don't need call. to call security. You don't need to call them. What the f you gonna do? What you from Africa? Oh, okay. Anyway, like I said. Can you give me the 400 you paid? We sell them for uh, 200. I no, can give you. I need 400. With Leslie's stark refusal to buy the item for twice its original price, the customer finally takes his business elsewhere. Nah, f you. I will never come back to my American jewelry alone. Y'all, y'all. Thank you so much. Friend. Have a nice day. F you. Thank you. You better be lucky I'm gonna throw this big mother at What the f you looking at? Snowflake. Y'all. 
I'll never come back to this bitch. I paid $500 for this bitch. Do you think I'm about to sell a phone? A customer made her way into the shop with the idea of getting herself a watch. I'm looking for a watch. Buy me a phone. $100, I got $100 to spend. All right, do you want a leather band, a metal band? Let me see this right here. This will be good. Okay. This one. This is really pretty. Okay. Mm. It's really pretty. It's really Looks pretty. good on you. It was 100 100 I'll take it. Okay? When she finds a watch that struck her fancy, Ashley gives her the price of the watch, to which she agrees. We add tax on that. It's going to be 106 All right. Here. No. What is this? It's a hundred dollar gift card. All right, gift card. Hundred dollar gift card. These are not our gift cards. The lady tries to pay for their watch with a VIP card, which is not legal tender for transactions, obviously. That is not our gift card. Turn around and swipe it, okay? There's no swiper on this. So you telling me I'm losing a hundred dollars? What is she gonna do? What y'all don't understand up in here? Okay, okay you what is I'm she not gonna about swipe? to lose. Hold on, right? Let me explain this. I'm not about to lose. I want to You're watch. Losing. Turn around and swipe. When she tries to get confrontational, Ashley asks for Byron's assistance in escorting the lady off the premises. Is that your merchandise? Yes. Um, not the call night one. Who will do all these cars? Over here. Hi. Hi, I have uh, somebody broke into somebody's car. I need the police out here as soon as possible. What the? This. Rodney! A laptop and two video games are missing. And now this? Hi, uh, this is American Jewelry, and we have stolen merchandise. Thank you. They're on their way. The plot thickens. Leslie is briskly approached by a very frantic Joe who's trying to report the thief they caught at the parking lot. Les. Hey, Les. Hey, Les. Yeah. Somebody outside breaking the car. Now? Yeah. Oh, my With the lady now cuffed and in custody while awaiting the police, Leslie tries to interrogate her. Are you kidding me? How old are you? We just steal out of it. Yeah? And what made you break in the car? Where are they? They left. They because you got busted? The lady remains unfazed, despite the threats of being incarcerated, so Leslie decides to end his questioning there. Because the only way you're going to ever learn not to break into cars, especially in... Okay. Sit back and we'll call the police. Hey, Whose car? Whose car? Not hers. Yeah. Yeah. Still trying to settle the case with a female thief, Leslie hears the sound of a loud crash right outside the store. Leslie heads out to the lot to investigate the noise, only to discover it all came from his security guards catching another thief. He was doing it here? He was breaking into cars in our parking lot. He hit her car bag and I was trying to get away. She called 911. Who will do all these cars? Over here. Hi. Really? Hi, I have uh, somebody broken into somebody's car. I need the police out here as soon as possible. To show how bad an idea it is to terrorize his customers and their belongings in his establishment, Les swiftly calls the cops in and reveals his plan to press charges. I tried breaking into the car out there. I opened the door and they came and got me. That's all I did. We busted these two thieves, and we're pressing charges to the fullest extent. My customers are not going to be not protected. That's right. That's right. OK? Ashley gets very upset when she discovers an employee she'd fired earlier when she gained suspicion of her stealing from the shop was trying to sell the item that started the entire altercation. There was Tress on it. She wants to sell us back that, that Rolex watch, the one that she bought. Said, listen, I need some extra money. When Ashley heads over to meet her brother and father just to break the news, Seth announces a very shocking piece of news. Tressa, she wants to sell the watch that she bought from us that was online. No way. Wait a second. Where are you going? Look what I got. What's this? What is that? It's a letter of dispute from the credit card company. Her boyfriend is saying that she never got the watch. Tressa's partner was actually trying to dispute the payment for the watches since they never made their way over to his hands through the normal means the shop had in place. You're joking. 
now the boyfriend's credit card company isn't paying us until the dispute is settled. Seth reveals the amount they lost due to the theft. That she received the watch, so now we're off $5,000. Well, it's really a bigger hit than that because we normally sell this watch in the store for $8,000. Whatever it takes, we need to come up with a plan. We need to get possession of this watch. An employee had been stealing from the shop again, so when Leslie caught wind of the whole thing, he decides to handle the whole case immediately. What should it do? Go get security. Then go get Ashley and Seth, and then bring me in Christina. You got it. With all evidence laid bare before her eyes, Christina admits her fault immediately. Is that your merchandise? Yes. Um, we're not the mom. Okay, I wrote it up, but I only did it when we were busy. So that who's left to the desk. The Golds questioned the lady to assess how excessive the damage her theft wrought on the business. Directed to loan on a watch like that. 450. 450. How much would we normally give a loan on that for? I've seen some go for 50. So in other words, you wrote up a fake ticket and stole money from us. Seth heads off to call for the police's aid in handling the case at hand. Hey, it's Seth from American Jury. How are you? Sorry to bother you, but uh, I just busted another one of my employees stealing. Have you been working with any other employee? So you were just stealing from us all alone without any knowledge of anybody else stealing from us. Leslie tries to offer her a deal that could favor both sides. Set me free, Christina, and I will open up that door. Tell me something that's going to get you out of jail today. Who is... I don't know anybody that stole me today. You're sure? I but you've already admitted that you stole more than $1,000, correct? Christina, after thinking it through, refuses to give out names like Leslie thought she would, so he decides to pressure her again. Last chance, because once that door opens and the cops come in here, I have no option. Last chance. She's running loans up for herself. Okay. And not bringing the merchandise in? Once that door opens, it's over. I want to help you, Christina. Okay. Rich attends to a customer who brought in a microphone he's hoping to sell. Let me see. Nice. They just threw them out in the crowd, and I picked them up. So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and put it nicely in? Rich finds a bit of discrepancy in the story the customer gave, so he went over to confirm. Just got out in the crowd, and I picked them up. Keep an eye on him. Exactly. I've got them. You're going to need to come down here. All right, thanks. Ash, call him. Having confirmed his suspicions with the real owner of the item, Rick asks Ashley to call in law enforcement. Jewelry, we have stolen merchandise. Thank you. They're on their way. 100 bucks a piece, if possible. How about 75 a piece? That works. Leslie decides to call for backup when the guy's friends make their way into the shop. What does it sound like? We'll better wait for my face a little bit, okay? <laughs> Are these kids now? Are these his friends? You know what? We could have a problem on our hands. Make sure security's at the front door. Mike, a manager at the club the thief stole the item from, manages to arrive and reveal his side of the story, all while they wait for the police to arrive. Last night, somebody slid in under a cage that we had and um, lifted two of these mics. That's it. So we're waiting for the police. Cops are coming. Well, they can wait. Well, I think. Why do we got to stay? We all got to stay. Why? I'm not the person that came You're up. You're all involved in the group. That's the way it works. Until we know what's going on, that's the way it's going to be. So if you want us to have a... Leslie furiously barrels over to his employees when he discovers the door to the laptop room ajar and the lock completely ruined. What the... This. Rodney! A laptop and two video games are missing. And now this? We have a lock room designated. There's a screwdriver laying next to it. Rodney immediately reveals the suspect he has in mind. Into the warehouse, and I see this screwdriver next to the laptop room. Door is wide open. Explain. You know what? I caught Justin just the other day breaking into the laptop room. Having caught Justin, another employee doing the exact same thing earlier, Rodney quickly outs him as the culprit. Next time I catch him doing it, I was going to fire him. I guarantee you Justin did that. How could a guy do Let's call it out. You got it. Ticked off by the damage to his property, a rage-filled Leslie confronts Justin. Randy, as running this back, tell me what is going on with this door. I need to get in there to get that laptop, so I just went in there and... What gave you the right to break into a locked room? Normally what happens is... Not normally. Did he give you permission to go into my room 
That's lie. Justin tries to explain his case, even if his story sounds sketchy. You took a screwdriver, Jimmy opened that lock, and walked in. Tell me what makes it right. No, I would never steal anything. It's just to do my job. When I'll, I'll ask Rodney for the key, I'll say, look, I need a laptop. It's, this has happened before. I'm waiting for 20 minutes, and Rodney doesn't show up to get this laptop, like if he's on break or if he's gone. The manager that I asked didn't come get the laptop, so I'll just... Leslie decides to fire Justin since his actions breached his trust. You broke my trust, and because of that, Justin, you're fired. I don't know if Justin did steal anything, but you can't have people that you don't trust. Seth attends to a customer who's in the market for a camera. I'm looking for cameras. What kind of good cameras you got? Yeah, whatever you need. Yeah, so it's the point oh, shoot okay, right here. How about that? 90 bucks. $90? Yes, sir. All right, yeah, I think I'll take this one. The customer immediately puts the camera in his pocket without having made his payment for it. Um, I'll just keep it right here. I'm just going to keep looking around. I'm still going to be shopping around. That's fine. Let's pay for it now, and then you can keep it in your pocket, and then you can keep shopping. Why can't we just pay for everything at the end of shopping? Then I'll hold the camera until you're ready. I don't want to forget the camera. Seth, in an attempt to make the customer comply with his directives, decides to enlist Byron's help. Byron, you want to hold on to this gentleman's camera that he's about to purchase from me? What, are you trying to call me a thief or something? No, I'm just telling you that he'll hold on to your camera. So you're right about it. But it makes sense. I'm going to buy you the You know camera. what? The customer remains obstinate, so Byron decides to take action. What I'm trying to tell you is that's the rule, so take that out of your pocket now. This year, I'm going to tell you to leave. Thank you, sir. But I want to buy the Sure, $90, sir. The man is escorted out of the shop. And then I'll show you my money when it's time to clock out. Byron, clock it ass out. Good day, bro. No, I, no, you won't let me buy it. Have a nice day, sir. I'm still shopping. Number four. A customer brings in a laptop she's hoping to pawn for some quick cash. Thank you. What do we got here? A uh, laptop. Laptop. You type in your password? Um, forget the password. You forgot the password. Her first attempt to unlock the laptop proves unsuccessful. However, after she fiddles with the keys for a while, she manages to. How do you forget the When's the last time you used this? Uh, about a month ago. You forgot your password? Yeah. There you go. Perfect. And how much did you want to get on this today? At least 165 Ashley makes the customer an offer that isn't that much of the price she was hoping to get. All right, I can do 150 and that's what I can do. Okay, can you do 165 or not? I can do 150 Okay, it's, I don't know what, I ain't got time. I'm here to help you. Okay, well, you have, it's like you don't like your job. You don't like your job, you shouldn't work here, sweetheart. The customer, in a bid to frustrate Ashley into doing her bidding, decides to let loose an array of insults. Oh, I way, said I could the way, go you treat, the way you treat your customers is so disrespectful. I actually asked. It's so, talk, learn how to talk, learn how to talk. Have a good day. You, Ashley, not willing to let the disrespect slide, decides to tell the woman off. If you can't do 165, then I can take my business somewhere else. Flat out. You done? You're, I said, I don't care. I can take my business somewhere else. Are you else. a lady or are you I a baby? Excuse you know what? Take don't this outside. While on her way out, the woman gets into a very heated argument with another customer. Oh, look, the world. Uh, you too much I said, I can take my business somewhere else. Number three. Ashley attends to a customer who's trying to sell off a laptop she brought in. She's trying to get some money so I can bail, bail my man out. How much are you looking to get? 500. 500. How'd you come up with 500? This, this is a new gig. The customer asks for a very unrealistic price for the odd-looking device. And I, I should barely get like 500 for it. This is serious. How? How would you use this as an idea? It's something like an eye popper. Ashley refuses to make an offer for the item immediately. However, the customer tries to force the transaction. You don't know about electronics, so I need somebody else, sweetie. Okay, well, I don't take demands. That's first of all. Second of all, you're not going to talk. Where's the manager at? Where's the manager? That's me. So if you, you want. Who, who's over you? Somebody that's over you. Do you want to give me $500? No, not talking Guess to who me. I when the customer tries to make a scene, Ashley hands her item over to her. So I'm gonna ask you to leave. No, I'm not going until you run me mine. Run me mine and run me mine. You can leave. No, I'm not leaving. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Oh. Who are you? Touch me. Do not touch me. The lady is escorted out of the establishment before she could create a scene. You threaten me, you're out.
out. You're not coming back. I don't care if it takes 10 people to escort you. Number two. Les gets into a confrontation with a customer who brought in an empty decorative bottle of liquor. Oh my can is a terrible Yeah, but don't be little nobody and don't be little what they have. I wasn't Because little. it's not valuable. To and that's so what they're worth. So you want to take a person down when they're in need? That's what you're saying? Ma'am, I'm Is that what you're saying? They're you have no respect. Despite the fair price Les gave for the bottle, the woman goes all on the offensive by raining all sorts of insults she can muster. This is a crystal bottle. It lasts. But anytime you're going to belittle a person, Damn, I didn't belittle you. I'll give you a hundred dollars. It's not worth more than a hundred bucks. Here ain't going to mean nothing. You can't take none of it with you, baby. I know that. When you get sick, the money ain't going to feed you or heal you. Having had enough of the ugly things the woman has spouted, Ashley rose in defense of her father. Don't you ever walk up to my baby, dad hey baby, don't point and fingers belittle my him and talk about his baby, store still, and talk about face. his health and talk about his life after this. Man. Don't you dare ever Man, come in here again. In my face. I don't okay. care you're in my dad's store and don't you ever think about coming in here no. again. Number one. Seth is thrust into a very bizarre situation by a man who brought in an oven with a full raw chicken in it. What is this? Do you see a raw chicken in here? Can I eat that? No. OK, then. This don't work. I'm Seth, how are you? I just paid $50. I need my money. I thought you were going to say you want your chicken cooked. No, I don't want. To prevent any sort of mishaps from occurring, since it's quite obvious the man is so out of it, the security personnel makes his way over to keep an eye on the situation. For real? What up, though? Bro. Where the owner at, man? You're I don't know why I'm talking to you, man. Where the owner? Bro, I'm going to get my money, bro. No, you're not. When the customer insists on getting a refund on the item, without a receipt, he really did get it from the shop. Seth decides to get him evicted from the shop. There's going to be some problems There's in here. There's not going to be any problems. There's going to be some problems There's only going to be man. one problem here, and that your ass is about to get tossed off. Bro, bro, you want some chicken? I do, but I like mine For cooked, real. bro. It's all right. Got time for this, man. While on his way, the man decides to leave the premises with the chicken in hand and the oven abandoned on the ground. You don't want that, bro. Real, y'all can keep that. What's going with the gloves? Give me my mother chicken, man. Yeah. 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 Put this bitch on the grill. Can, Can I, I talk store? to somebody nope. else? Why do I have to talk to you? Because you disrespectful. I'm gonna help you and the baby. What the f? Oh, oh, too, man. Like, don't oh, touch him. Come on. Come on, man. Let's go. Come on, man. Let's go. Really? Let's go. Hey, hey, let's go. I told you, man. Let's go. Come on, fight with me. Your short ass no. gonna tell me. Are you angry because your and coat's so tight? No, my coat ain't tight. You so much little back there. We get time to leave. A pregnant customer walked up to Ashley asking for her help and picking out an item that caught her. I didn't have the money last week. For sure. You saw it? Where is it? It's right over here. Sure. What do you do? Well, I'm due next month. Oh, is it your first? Yes, it is. My Congratulations. The customer took Ashley to the item in question and decided to open up about the tragic situation she had found herself in. Well, I was quoted $20 for it. You were quoted $20? Let's say all I have is $10. I'm a single mother. My husband just left me. Really? Yes. Ashley listened with rapt attention as the woman reveals her woes. And this is something that I want to get for my baby. This would mean so much to me. Empathizing with the customer, especially since she's a mother herself, Ashley decides to sell the item at a very low price. You give me five, and then my gift to you is the remaining 15. That'll be great. That'd be really great. Okay. It means so much to me. So let's take it out to her car right now. And seriously, after you have your baby, come back here. I'll have you fill out a job application. I sure will. Okay? Thank you very much. Ashley enlists Joe's help in moving the item over to the customer's car. Again, thank you so oh, much. Oh, my pleasure. Anything to help you and the baby. Since the jig was up, the customer kicks a very hasty retreat from the place. Hello? Excuse me? You trying to scam me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? What? I tried to be nice to her? Unbelievable. I even offered her a job after she had the baby. I think she just had the baby. 
A customer approaches Les, hoping he can help recover a computer she had allegedly dropped off at the shop. Brand new Dale in the box, never been opened. Never been opened. Yes. Let me see. Do me a favor. Look up B O W I E. She got something in fun? Yeah, she does have a fur coat. Since the lady revealed she doesn't have a ticket or any other form of paperwork to back her claim, Les calls an employee over to help search through the system. You can go right over to the windows and make a thing. No, I want my computer. Right my over. computer. That's my it. computer. Yes, my computer. No, but you have a fur coat in front. I, and I understand that, but I have also I have a computer. I, yes, I do. See, this is the problem. Y'all don't know how to talk to nobody, and I guess I'm because talking. I'm the little dog that you can just You ain't a no little me. dog, you're taller no, than no. I am. A quick search through the database shows the lady has nothing other than a fur coat in the shop, but insists on leaving with a computer. And you know you got it. Now, what would you want with a poor bitch's computer? Check and give me my computer. I checked, and it's not here. I mean, damn, I do a lot of business I in know. here. I run this mother I'm like the VIP up in this bitch. Les tries his best to calmly talk the problem out with the lady, but she stays obstinate and refuses to listen. You pulling my leg. I wouldn't want to pull Well, I'm not going nowhere. Not here till you get stick my computer. Ma'am, stick around. I mean, I try to live a Christian life. She's a nice, polite Christian woman. Yeah, right. I think that you are being so despicable. I mean, despicable you me. Now you finna sit up here and try to twist me around like I'm like I'm stupid. If I'm stupid, you stupid. When she notices all her tactics don't seem to phase less, she resorts to verbally abusing him. A move that turns out to be the last straw. Well, the up problem is this okay. stupid mother isn't gonna yeah, help. Yeah, well, you. we you were scoring her out of here. You put your hands I on me. I mean, that's enough already. Yeah, that's enough already. Put your hands on me. Look like that big mother. A customer walks into the shop, hoping to voice a complaint about an indomitable workout chair he allegedly purchased there. This thing obviously couldn't handle what I was doing on it, so two days later, it don't even work, so... you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. I didn't think I needed to keep it. There's nothing I can do for you without a receipt. Les asks for a receipt, but the customer reveals he had disposed of it, which puts Les in a tough spot, since he can't really help if he doesn't get proof of payment. How about you just get my money? We won't, you know, we won't have any more problems with this. But I'm I not, don't have I'm any not, problems now. Well, it could be a problem. I need my mother money back. I, I understand that, and I'd like to give your mother. You're money gonna back. give me my money back. I'm not gonna do yes, anything. You are. I'm not gonna you, do anything. All the, all the customer tries to threaten less into giving him some money for the item. There's no receipt. There's no money. There better be some money. No or idea. what? Or what? There's gonna be a problem. Or How about what that? What kind of? Problem oh, man, don't put your hands on I me. Don't back need that, you. Don't you give me no Talk like a gentleman. Go ahead, bro. You give Talk me like the receipt, gentleman. I'll be more than happy like to Like I said, I don't have the receipt. And I don't have the money. When things don't work out as intended, the man resorts to violence. Don't touch me. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Really? Let's go. Hey, let's go. I told you, man. Let's go. Come on, fight with me. Come on, outside. We got you, buddy. Bring a couple more. Come on. We got you. Bring a few more. Come on, bring all y'all out here. Come on. That's it, buddy. Come on. Bring five or six more out here. Come on. Bring a few more. That's it, buddy. Bring a few more. That's it, my man. Bring a few more. Here's your machine, buddy. Don't come in here threatening us. We don't go for that. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Remember that. Ashley and Booby J, while managing the counter, attend to a customer who is trying to return a piece of jewelry that was gifted to her. She told you that um, she bought them from us? Yes. Ashley tries to take a closer look at the item before she could finally address the issues. So there's two problems here. The first problem, you don't have the receipt. If you had a receipt, it would look like this. Yeah. I know what a receipt would look like if I had one. No cash. On the receipt, it says no cash refund. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. And we don't sell fake jewelry. Not liking what she heard, the customer tries to disrupt business. Well, um, excuse me, anybody buying any jewelry from here, don't get no more jewelry from hey, here because this hey, ain't good. Hey, hey, no, hey, no. hey, hey, hey. In an attempt to undermine Ashley, the customer shuts her up and turns to Bobby J instead. Y'all no. short ass no. gonna tell me. Are you angry because your coat's so tight? No, my coat ain't tight. You so mother little back to, there. Think it's time to leave. I think it's time for the baby to get fed. Having had enough of her terrible attitude, 
Ashley gives a lady two choices to determine the treatment she'll receive. Two options. You, you pick whichever option you want. You can leave. Non Second option. Where? Second option what? is you can get the receipt and then ain't no can mother you finish receipt. Listening. It ain't can no receipt. Can you finish listening? No. Can I think it's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. I bet you are. No, I bet I ain't. This is Joe. Joe. Uh, He's going to show you to the front door. Wait a mother minute. Now get your hands off. I guess you'll leave. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll be back. See you then. Little ass baby. You need to go get fair right quick. A customer walks up to Ashley with an item she's hoping to loan or sell. It's 50 bucks. Why is it $50? The certificate and everything is in there. And the bag costs actually way more than that. The woman tries to know why Ashley had valued the purse to be lower than she expected. Well, if you can tell, it's actually stained. Okay. All through here. Ashley revealed the issue she has with the purse. $75 instead of the 50. Yeah, I wasn't interested in more than 50. If you know purses, then you know this is cost way more than this. Okay, but I'm not gonna pay you for the amount that you think it's worth because it's stained. This is not one of the newer ones. This is not this season. I know about purses. But it's, you're still willing to buy for $50, though. So if it wasn't worth why would you even say $50? So they didn't say it wasn't worth Can I so talk to somebody else? I'm gonna talk to your pepperoni looking ass. Ashley gets upset with the woman due to her disrespectful tone. So she decides it's best to show her disinterest in the deal. Can I get somebody else to talk to? It don't even matter. I don't have to talk to you. And I don't have to talk to you either, so why don't you go home? Can I talk to somebody nope. else? Why do I have to talk to you? Because you disrespectful. I'm, I'm disrespectful and you call me a pepperoni ass? Ugly ass bitch. Can I talk to the owner? I'm the owner. You're that not one. the owner. The owner is the other man. You you must have. How you get here? You <laughs> your way to the top. <laughs> That computer. No, hold on. No, 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 don't touch him and let him go. Man, you and your mohawk, shut the hell up. My mohawk doesn't talk. You tell me you spent the thousands. They're not real. They're not real. No, not gold, not diamonds. Let's say something. The ticket is a counterfeit ticket. Les attends to a very strange customer who walks into the shop with an imaginary companion. My partner right here, Robert, we want to find this. You're who? My partner Robert right here. The customer brings out the item they were hoping to sell and hands it over to Les, who tries to confirm its authenticity. But I didn't see him. So, 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 what do you think about this? Be cool, Robert. Be cool. Robert is very cool. Having confirmed the properties from which the item was made from, Les rejects it immediately since it holds little or no value to him. What you think about this? I think it's really cool, but I can't give you anything for it because it's not silver. What do you mean you can't give me nothing for this? Oh, I need money. No, that's an insult. The customer grew irate as soon as Les delivered his verdict. I'm telling you, this is Robert. Robert. Tell him. Tell him, Robert. Tell him. This is worth 200. 200. The customer tries to push the deal by recounting an ad from the TV. You, y'all told me. I didn't tell you anything. Give you $200. So have you seen Steve doing our commercials? Who is Steve? Who is Steve? Steve's my buddy. Les decides to mess with a customer by making up his own imaginary friend. Steve. He does our commercials. Steve? Steve. I need to talk to the boss, man. Excuse me. In an effort to get the clearly delusional customer out of his shop, Les set in motion a very clever plan. Somebody, he can't give me nothing for this. Hey! You know, come on, let's go to the outside. I gotta look at it. The customer manages to see through the plot and refuses to leave the premises. Man, let me go! Uh-uh! No, man! Left with no other choice, the customer was forcefully escorted out of the shop. You know what? Yeah! And you know what? I'm not coming back! And you know what? I have a night day. To get rid of the customer for good, Les decides to humor the customer by bringing the customer's imaginary friend over to the parking lot. Be careful, Robert's here. Sorry, Robert. I got him for you. Oh, you got Robert for me? Here you go, here you go. Yeah. Thank you, because I went off and left him. Here you go. I'm this not coming right. back no more All to right, your damn you. store. A man walks into the shop with hopes of trading in his faulty phone for another. Hey, what's up, dog? How you doing? Well, I just got this phone that I bought here like two, three days ago, and that. Did you download a camera function? No, it clearly got a camera. Why would I have to download it? Just asking. The customer reveals he didn't bring a receipt with him. A very fatal mistake. Receipt. Just get me another. That's all I'm asking for. As soon as you give me that receipt, I can see what I can do for you. So Clearly, I have you to tell to you. So you need to fix this, or without the receipt, there's nothing I can do for you. And getting. 
Somebody. Rich tries to turn the man away. However, he remains unrelenting. Let's go, yeah, you did, cuz. What kind of phone is it? It's an iPhone, clearly. Yeah, but we haven't had one of those out for sale since I've been here in six months. We I mean, no I just seen you in we two no weeks. Force. The customer tried to point out the employee who sold him the phone. However, he outed himself as a liar when he made mention of a time frame different from the one he called out earlier. Buy that from us. Yes, I clearly did. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on service. over here. You can go back to selling that computer. No, hold on. No, 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 don't touch him and let him go. Man, you and your mohawk, shut the hell up. My mohawk doesn't talk. I talked to the manager or somebody. The goatee go is the manager. And he's telling you to either give me a receipt or get the help. Without any evidence to back the man's claim, Rich asks him to take his leave. These phones right here, what about that one right there? Do that one work? Pull the things up over your ears a little because you Do clearly can't hear me. There, it's off. Phone work. It's a simple question. Does phone work? You know what? Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. Oh. Having had enough of his rude countenance, Rich asks for help in kicking the man out. <laughs> OK, just don't touch me then. I'm going to be back. I'm coming for my money. Clear? Send me a picture of the receipt from your phone. The man and his girlfriend meet Seth with the hopes of making a trade. What will you think about uh, the trading? We, we do trade-ins all the time. Oh, trade you here, right? Okay. He told me he spent the thousands. They're not real. They're not real. No. The man tries to stop his girlfriend from trading in the earrings he got for her so he can cover his lies. Oh, yeah. So you mean you lied to me? No, I didn't lie to you, baby. But he just sat up here and said that they're not real. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. He does. You know what I'm talking, talking about? about? You think no. I'm just some type no, of fake ass no. bitch to just buy me some I fake earrings? I can play. Why would you buy me some fake earrings? So so this Despite the man's continuous attempt to calm her down, the lady gets more ticked off almost to the point of assaulting him in a fit of rage. Gamer. So you gonna buy me some fake-ass earrings? Fake-ass earrings? You gonna buy me some fake-ass earrings? Let's do it. Hey, how about you? To eventually make their way out of the shop to sort out their differences. Touch me. Do not touch me. Let me go. Start a relationship. I'm, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Baby. And you stupid-ass mother The woman accuses Ashley of selling a fake item to her. Hi. I asked for a chinchilla scarf. Yeah. And you sold me a rabbit. This look like chinchilla to you. How much did you spend? Do you remember that? I know I spent the grip. Grip. Ashley tries to get a handle on the situation at hand. Okay. How do you know it's rabbit? Because my girl told me. She it. threw it back at me and told me this ain't chinchilla, this is rabbit. After the customer reveal how she came to the conclusion that the item was a fake, Ashley denies having sold the item to her. I didn't sell you this. You sold no. me this. Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. This ain't your... The receipt's in my... To confirm if she really bought the item from the shop, Ashley asks for a receipt. However, the woman maintains a confrontational stance. You sold me this for real. I ain't leaving here until I get money back. That is bug money right there. Ashley could only stare in shock as the woman put out her argument. Yes. Look at it. Just slide through there. Look at that. Ain't nothing to chill up about it. I want my money now. Like that home is Walter, but I want my money. That's all. That was nice on you. Well, Byron tried to escort the woman out of the shop before the situation got worse. Man. Man, I swear your buddy up in this bitch. Why you so violent? Girl, go on up out of here. Try to be nice to you. Now you're gonna leave it? You wear that! Two ladies walk into the shop, heading over to the redemption section of the shop to reclaim a ring they'd allegedly bought. That's my ticket, and I find my ring. This isn't our ticket. What do you mean it's not your ticket? Tap. Give it all stupid folk read, right? The employee attending noticed something wrong with the pawn ticket they brought in immediately. Say something. The ticket is a counterfeit ticket. Or nine thousand dollars, and if you ain't got it, come from behind this glass. So I'll go get less to go get. It. Les decides to head over to confront the woman who had taken to harassing his employee when she failed to bow to their demand. Come on, Les. I drove all the way home to get that ticket. Uh huh. Okay. I need to make sure it's here then. Got our ticket. What you mean it ain't your ticket? It say American jewelry. And it may say that. So. The issue is, this is a counterfeit ticket. When Les reveals the ticket they brought in is a fake, the two quickly beat a hasty retreat, all while threatening to bring in a lawyer. Y'all some bull****. Y'all some straight up bull****. Bet you y'all gonna pay me for this $10,000 ring. Of course we are. I will be back with my attorney. And I'll be more than happy to explain it. So they threw these things out into the crowd and you just happened to catch one? So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and... They peeled the... Roof off? Yeah, they peeled the roof back. 
Son of a bitch. Go check all the departments, see if anything is missing. You're a liar. Why'd you take my ring? I'm sorry. What? A guy with a gnarly haircut and no manners walks in to pour in a couple of mics he claimed he got at a concert. The question is, who hands out free microphones at a concert? Other questions come to mind that raise some suspicion about the seller. Hey, what's up, bud? I'm looking to find these uh, microphones I picked up from a uh, concert last night. Uh. This guy's story is obviously rehearsed. Despite the story being rehearsed, it still has a lot of holes in it. The concert story simply sounds too good to be true. It's nice. They just threw him out in the crowd, and I picked him up. Rich is not falling for such a bad story. From how he questions the seller, Rich almost says, just how stupid do you think I am? If the seller is aware that Rich does not believe his story, he doesn't show it. He just wants cash from these mics. So they threw these things out into the crowd, and you just happen to catch one? So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and put it nicely inside of this thing? No, I got Zip them. it up and then threw it out there. Rich questions him again, almost as if he wants to give the guy a hint that he should stop the cock and bull concert story and come clean. When did that happen? I just got out in the crowd and I picked him up. Really? Really? Hold on. Keep an eye on him. Rich shows almost supernatural detective skills so far. Not only was he able to tell that the seller was lying to him about the mics, but he also knew the right guy to call and inquire about stolen mics. I have a gentleman down here who is trying to sell me some microphones. Are you missing some? Exactly. I've got them. You're going to need to come down here. All right, thanks. Now that it's been confirmed that the mics were stolen, the best course of action would be to call the authorities. Ashley has no problems doing just that. Call the cops. Hi, um, this is American Jewelry, and we have stolen merchandise. Thank you. They're on their way. The plot thickens. The ball has been set in motion to apprehend this guy. However, Rich knows that he has to stall the thief by all means possible. Rich knows exactly how to do this, and that is by pretending to give the guy what he wants. How much were you looking for? 100 bucks a piece, if possible. How about 75 a piece. That works. As if it's not already glaring that this guy is full of nonsense, he adds to the list by not having an ID. You can probably guess where he lost his ID. I'm gonna have to have somebody to pawn him for me. I ain't got my ID. I lost it with my wallet at the show. Rich's task of holding the man in the pawn shop is not an easy one, especially with how annoying he is. Rich looks like he'd very much like to hit this young man in the face. What's this sound like? Move that away from my face a little bit, okay? More friends of the thief show up, and Rick does not see that as a good sign, so he decides to take some countermeasures. Who the f are these kids now? Are these his friends? You know what? We could have a problem on our hands. Make sure security's at the front door. The club manager shows up, and he's one relieved man. He owes Rich big time for getting his microphones back to him. Good, what's up? Good. Hey, Mike, what's going on? I'm so glad the club manager's finally here so we can figure out what's going on. Last night, somebody slid in under a cage that we had and um, lifted two of these mics. That's it. The mic thief and his crew finally notice something is off. He wants to make a break for it, but Lezer's security is not going to let that happen. Not under Lezer's watch. So we're waiting for the police to come. Okay. Uh, they're leaving. No, man, you leave. can't leave. The cops told us to hold you here. Cops are coming. Well, they can wait. Well, I think. Why do we got to stay? We all got to stay. Why? I'm not the person that came You're all involved in the group. That's the way it works. Until we know what's going on, that's the way it's going to be. So if you want us to have a seat, Tolikovsky here. This guy walks up to Ashley, hoping to get an appraisal and a pawn on the piece of jewelry. Of course, Ashley is ready to serve in the best way she can. I also wanted to know how much you guys will give me for it. Like, as a pawn, and then I pay it back. Okay, when I give you an appraisal, that's not how much I'm going to give you in pawn. Okay. Ashley may have been ready to serve, but she was not ready for the way this woman, who must be his girlfriend, walked in on their conversation. What the f are you doing? What are you talking about? You said you're coming in to get a receiver. A shocking revelation comes to light, and now you know this guy is in a world of trouble because this has now entered the realm of stolen property. I wanted uh, an appraisal on this ring. On my ring? Why'd you take my ring?
This guy has already been caught red-handed after stealing and trying to pawn his girlfriend's ring. She gives him a chance to come clean because we think she already knows the answers to the questions she's asking. Well, I wanted to see how much it was worth. Bull Why'd you take my ring? Get bike parts? The girlfriend obviously knows why he's here with her ring and it ticks her off that he keeps denying with a half-truth that he just wanted an appraisal. You're a liar. Yesterday you said you needed bike parts and didn't have the damn money. And all of a sudden you got my damn ring. I just wanted to know how much it was worth, that's all. Now we know she's angry that her boyfriend stole her ring, but we all underestimated just how angry this woman was with her thieving boyfriend. You're a liar. Why'd you take my ring? Sorry. What? Ashley definitely does the dumbest move here after witnessing what just went down firsthand. Can I just have my ring? Well, yeah, he's the one that gave it to me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just give me my ring. Ashley is lucky that the woman's anger was only reserved for her boyfriend because she could have easily caught a blow to the face. Just give him the ring. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. It may be hard not to feel sorry for the guy, even if he did steal and almost pawn his girlfriend's ring. We know there will be consequences. Let's go. Ring out. Les has some news to break to his daughter, and she's really not going to like it. To be fair to Ashley, the idea is a good one this time. Night. I'm not changing the system. Adding an extra night security guard? is an expense we don't need. It's two versus one in Les's office, so Ashley doesn't bother to argue the issue. I just don't understand. Every single time I have an idea and I bring it to your attention, he then has to walk in, say, we're not doing it. That's why we have a security system. You know, I hope this one doesn't come back and bite you in the ass. That's why we have cameras. Karma is almost immediate for Les and Seth that even they can't believe what just happened. You can't help but feel this would not have happened if they just listened to Ashley. They peeled the roof off? They the, yeah, they peeled the roof back. Son of a bitch. Go check all the departments, see if anything is missing. Les and Seth see what they're looking for after checking the cameras. It's funny that the thieves were only interested in coats and not jewelry. Looks like they grabbed yeah, the coat right coat. there and then out. So these guys could have been part of a three-man team with the other guy in the refrigerator. Yeah, that's probably why they ran out so quickly. Thank God we didn't lose much, but something needs to be done. Les and Seth get a well-deserved I told you so from Ashley, who's enjoying being right in this bleak pawn shop scare. There is a theory going around that the thieves might have been hired by someone on the inside to prove that their security system was not good enough, but that's just a theory. We're going to have somebody patrolling the parking lot outside. This way we'll never have that issue with people breaking we in again. We should have had this issue. Well, but we did. So now we've learned and we'll take care of it. One guy patrolling the parking lot every night from now on. So Seth, am I right? Kills you to admit it to me, doesn't it? 